What's up, guys? It's uh, what is today's date? Man, I don't even know, homie. It's, uh, we're looking at July the 9th. It's July 9th, 2017. Hey, hey. This is uh, episode two of 30 something, and today we're going to be discussing uh, buying a house. Buying a house. Yeah, so. Uh, Next steps. Stay tuned, guys, and, uh, you know. So let's do this, let's do this. Let's lay out like, okay, y'all, hey, we want to come at you and we want to talk about some real life things that you can apply that, that necessarily like he might know, but I don't know. You know what I mean? Right. And then y'all get in on that loop. So okay. it's one of those things where I feel like you've got that notch. I mean, you've right. got that mortgage. Yeah, I'm the one You're the paying house. that shit. Mm -hmm. So you know those questions that I have that I'm sitting here going, hmm, you know, and I just feel like maybe... There will be other things that will come up in the vlog or the podcast that people will... I don't... You know, maybe we'll come up with it. Maybe they'll ask. I mean, whatever. Right. But. And there will be times where I'm the one asking you about what... Uh, you know what I mean? And that's what, like... But those questions got to be asked. You know, you, you can't... What is it? You have not because you ask not. Right. So, man, let me ask. Let me look stupid. I don't care. I mean, fuck. You know... It is what it is. Dude. Well, what, well, what, well, you know, then let's just have like an open type dialogue and like, uh, well, I mean, what is, what would you ask me? Like, what's the questions? You know what I mean? So yeah. basically let's lay down the fact. Okay. So last March, uh, 2016, me and my wife, who was at the time, my fiance, uh, bought a house. So basically what we did, and this gets a little complicated here for a second, bear with me. It won't be long, but the, the route we took was we got a USDA loan, which is, um, anything outside of like certain city limits, the USDA will, uh, give you a lower interest rate than an FHA. And like I said, you got to be looking to buy a house to kind of understand what I'm saying. Right, but, right. but you will if you're kind of heading in that direction. But anyway, long story short, we used the USDA loan, 0% uh, down, lower, more, lower, lower interest rate. So that's what happened. We went and saw, I'll tell you, rule number one, if you are interested in buying a home, get off your ass and go meet a mortgage broker. Mm -hmm. They are going to tell you what hoops to jump through because you're going to have to jump through hoops. I mm -hmm. promise you that. You're going to be borrowing $100,000 or more from a bank. You're going to jump through some hoops. Mm -hmm. Nobody's giving you, no one's giving you a hundred stacks. Right. Yeah. And understand too, nobody's giving you the hundred stacks. Right. You're well, paying back. Yeah. Interest. You know, interest rates are lower than they've been. They're getting what, theirs. There's no doubt about that. From what I've been told, the interest rates, rates right now are lower than they've ever been. You know, when I talked to my parents or my in-laws, they were paying 13% mortgage rates. We're Right now we're paying... As an average in America, anywhere from like three to four and a half, five percent interest mm -hmm. rates, which I guess people say low. is bad for the economy in the long run, but it's good for you now. And I can only worry about me. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And like I'm going to capitalize off. It's a buyer's market right now. Believe it or not, it is a buyer's market right now because interest rates are lower than they've ever been before mm -hmm. after the crash. So what? I mean, what questions do you have? So, for me, man? so you know, I'm my situation, y'all. Like we've talked about, you know, I'm I'm. You know, there's no ring on this finger. Um, I am in a very awesome relationship, happily for three years now. About and um, you know, there's there's definitely a lot on the horizon in that regard. So, as as someone who's 29, who's my birthday's coming up in a month, y'all about to be 30. Big you know, big steps there. Uh, a little nervous about it, but anyways, um, you know. So these questions start to arise. You know, we've been together. We're looking to jump into that next thing, that next big thing. You know. Uh, and it's daunting to sit there and look at houses and see those numbers, $200,000 or whatever, and you're just like, God, I mean, how is it possible for someone like me to ever get into that situation? It just seems so far away, but yet attainable. And, you know, so I guess what I wanted to do was maybe ask you a few questions about, like, uh, for instance, you know, in your opinion, is it better? Is it better to rent or is it better to own? Let's just like start off start real, there. real general. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you this: me and my wife, um, before we lived together here, where we live now in a little mountain town, North Carolina, we uh, lived an hour and a half from each other. I rented a place with my brother. I lived in an attic. I paid two hundred dollars a month for rent. Okay. It was a little town. I worked at Wendy's, mm -hmm. you know, making seven fifty an hour. Okay. So like that was my life. Moved moved up here. With my fiance when she graduated college, uh, we rented this place on the river. It was super cool. It was six fifty a month. Well, we well, at first it was five fifty a month. We lived in a one bedroom. Then we upgraded to the two bedroom, same same complex. Complex, yeah. the easiest way to put it. It was still a house, but it was a complex. You know, uh, two bedroom, six fifty a month, low rent. Okay. 
But uh, floodplain, I mean, we got flooded out all the time. No washer and dryer. Okay. Um, neighbors right on top of us. You know. So not where you not your not where you wanted to be forever. Yeah, not definitely not. And we liked it for a while, and and we kept getting flooded out. Basically, we lived on a river. I mean, the footage. I wish I could, I might be pull some up and show you, but we. Uh, we, it was cool, you know. Yeah. It was cool for a season. Everything has its season, right? Right. right. That's and, true. and then fall came, winter came, and it was time to go. You know, mm-hmm. um, we started looking to rent another place. We even had uh, discussed with another guy, like maybe being our roommate and getting like a twelve hundred dollar a month place. That's kind of the average where we live is twelve fifteen hundred dollars for like a two or three bedroom place. Yeah. Uh, well, man, honestly, we started looking at mortgage rates and what people were paying a month in mortgages and it's a lot closer to like and I'm just going to shoot numbers because it's the real life and I feel like that's what we're talking about and a lot of people don't like to talk about yeah, this yeah, you know, yeah, I mean, it's, we pay about $900 a month now for a mortgage over tw- split two ways instead of 1200 split three mm-hmm. so we pay a little bit more but we own the house you know right, and honestly right. simply put would I rather rent or own I, I enjoy owning my home you know, people are going to say, well, when your water heater goes out, you got to fix it. Yeah, well, you're also, when you rent, you're paying that premium rate each month to replace the water heater. And that money's gone, never to be seen. Never again. to be seen again. Never to be seen If again. I can luckily and survive for the next 30 years and pay off this mortgage, this money is mine. Right. This house is mine. This property, this land, yeah, that's something that you cannot take away from you. And so even if you're in a good market... You know, and there are good markets in America. I don't know where you live. You might not be in a good market, a good buyer's market, or but I know the price value here for homes and property. Well, or it might be a seller's market. Here's what they say about you property, know, I man. Mean, it only goes. All right, buy property. They can't make any more of it. There you go. They can't make any more land. There you go. You know, unless you're in Dubai. You know, right. you're shooting fucking sand in the ocean. Right. You know? But uh, we are the value of our home. We bought our home. We put in a uh, water purifier. We put in. Uh, we put in, we redid the yard where the water runs off of it, right, and stuff. We instantly uh, added five or ten grand of equity onto our home immediately. We bought it for ten thousand okay. dollars, and that's the value. Hey, now we're thirty years old. I mean, these are words that should not be like, "Whoa, what's equity?" You know, these are things like, "Hey, we're adults." I mean, right. that's we have got to start doing the research, doing the. Um, and the if you don't know what equity is, basically the easiest way I can put it is, is equity is, you know, it is the value of the property and things you own without like fiscal cash in hand. So, like, the value of this house puts equity into my, like, total um, value because the house is worth so much. If I had to liquidate or sell or if I just wanted to flip the house and sell it, maybe I don't have to just, I ran out of money, I got to sell my house. Maybe I'm just, maybe it's like, hey. It's added value. This house is worth 20 grand more than it was three right. years ago. We could flip it right now. Right. But, you know, really it's long game, though. So, so, so here's another thing, man. As someone who rents... And I live in a different part of the state than you, so, you know, we all have that to take in consideration. We live in North Carolina, by the way. We look at about $800 a month. And Mm -hmm. that's, you know, that's just flat. That's just rent. That's not talking, we're not talking internet, we're not talking about cell phone, we're not talking about gas, water, all that shit. You know, so that stuff, at the end of the day, I mean, we're looking at another couple hundred bucks. You know, so, like we talked about, that money is not tangibly going towards anything. It's just going to a landlord somewhere and you know we're having to call him hey can you replace this that and the other and then it never happens so in your situation at least you have control right. over hey something's broken i'm just going to fucking fix it i don't it. call the landlord i call the repairman there you go yeah so in that regard that's definitely a plus i would say but there's a, there is a give and take i mean would you say that when you were renting, you were a little more at ease about like, hey, you know, if something breaks, at least we don't have definitely to fucking at pay ease. For it. But before I was married, I was more at ease. Before I was a manager at my job, I was more at ease. Before okay. you're a father, true, you're more true. at ease. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like life only gets more stressful. How much rocks can you carry? You know, you got a boulders on your back while you're walking the, through this life. How many boulders can you carry? Gotcha. And I feel like I can carry that boulder because it's like, well. Yeah, well, weren't you a lot more at ease when you were just a freeloading floozy and didn't care about anything? Weren't you a lot more at ease when life, when you were a child? So what are you going to do, regress? You know, you have to progress. Can't do that. You yeah. have to be your Press pro- on. You have to be your parents one day. Absolutely. You know, yeah, I'll, I'll tell you, up. honestly, the, um, the, the part about owning a home is, to me, isn't even like, well, which, is it better to rent or own? Really isn't the true question. The, the question I feel like I get asked a lot and, and that we dealt with when we went to go buy our home was... Um, how do we do it? Yeah. What do we do? I don't know what to do. I don't have that money they want. Rule number one, and I've already said this, go see a mortgage broker. 
because they are going to sit there. They don't get, and you don't pay them any money. They are paid off the deal. So you probably, your deal is probably inflated already because of the way the system is built because the sure. idea of a mortgage broker is kind of already played in. So even if you don't go see a mortgage broker and you do it all yourself, you're still paying for the mortgage sure. broker. Yeah. yeah. Um, so go see a mortgage cut. broker. Yeah, they're getting a cut. They're gonna, I mean, yeah, and, it's, and, it's the, business. and since they're getting a cut, they're going to do the job right. Right, exactly. And the mortgage broker we had, he was an asshole, man. Mm. He was not very nice to me or my wife. Guess what? I told you we keep it real, y'all. Hey, where we're sitting right <laughs> now, though, I own this house because of him. Yeah. You know, so, still still send him a text message. Thank you for yeah. everything and helping me get this so home. The relationship was symbiotic in the way that, you know, hey, you guys needed something. He knew how to get it. Boom. Let's take this route. Well, and you know, um, a, a good friend of mine, Kanye West, once said, uh, if you're not being used, you're not useful. So, like, the thing is, we were using each other. We were useful also. Like, we, we Purpose was found by the fact that we were cool, using man. each other to get something, you know. So you're going to go see a mortgage broker. And I'm going to tell y'all, I'm going to shoot straight with y'all, and not everybody has this luxury. We had family that was willing to help us with a little bit of money and stuff. But a lot of you do have that. Here, here's what Here's what makes me go crazy. It's not that other people don't have the same opportunities that I have or we have or whoever has. It's that they do have the same opportunities and they don't use them. Right. Right. Absolutely. Well, I don't, I'm not the... asking my parents for money, but you ask them for $200 when you ain't got something. I mean, you know, like you, you go to your family with a good plan and, and usually they'll help you. Right. And hopefully you have a family. I know everybody does. I know people are going to leave a message or a comment saying like, well, I don't have a family. My parents died in a car crash when I was six years old or something crazy. I understand that that is reality for some people. But also for a lot of people, the reality is you can get help if you're willing to ask. There's many paths. There's many paths There's too because it's paths. not just getting, okay, so say you don't got the parents. What's your next step then? Figure out your next step. And that's where somebody like a mortgage broker can really help you or somebody. Mm -hmm. Look for help. Yeah. Look for somebody that can And don't help. be afraid to ask, yeah. Because okay. um, when you get built right and you become a power player in this world, you can then help people yourself. You can be a parent mm -hmm. or a helper or right. like the mortgage broker-esque type where it's like, you know, I, my job is that I help people achieve their goals. Mm -hmm. You know, you're going to have people tell you that are in like um, the, the mortgage market or the insurance market or like, uh, you know, anything, that, debt consolidation, whatever. anything. They're going to tell you it's all a gimmick. It's all a scheme. It's all a, a patsy scheme. It is. The welcome to America. Business, man. That's what makes it all turn. But so is renting. Mm -hmm. What do you think renting is? What do you think when the guy is paying, you're paying for the, you're paying for the upkeep, power, water, everything for a home and they're putting money in their pocket mm -hmm. and you're not getting anything for it. Every time I pay my mortgage, part of my home is paid off. Right. My mortgage slowly shrinks. Right. You know, because the way the mortgage works is you so pay an interest reality. rate. See, most people don't. I don't know that. Most people probably my age are, aren't in the know on that. You know, as you pay your mortgage, you're slowly chunking, chipping away at that, you know, that overall debt. Well, the first year that we paid for our mortgage, our mortgage went down two cents. Okay. Nobody hear me okay. out. We only paid the bare minimum. Okay. Now, as money starts to rise for us and we do better in life, as we hope we do, maybe not. But, I mean, that's the goal. We're, yeah, on, a, yeah. we're on a plan. We have a plan. Right. right. Right now, we've been on the plan pretty well. So, as long as we stay on the plan, say I start putting, instead of 900 I start putting 1500 down each month. Mm -hmm. Well, the extra 600 goes off the top of the mortgage. It's not interest. Gotcha. It's not okay. nothing. It's off the top of the mortgage. And every time you pay off the top of the mortgage... The way the interest works is, is it's a percentage. There's a big math equation, but it's basically a percentage of what you owe the bank. Mm -hmm. So each month, that percentage, that equation is made, and they say, and here's the extra six, you know, six hundred dollars chucked on, or whatever the number yeah, is. Yeah. So it's like credit card debt. If you know anything about credit card debt, the equation is very similar to a lower interest rate. Um, so the more you pay off your credit card, the less your interest rate is. Your bill shrinks. A mortgage is the exact same thing. It is a loan. Mm -hmm. You are paying back a loan. Honestly, man, I love owning my house. I love. I don't love when the water heater goes out. Okay, the air conditioner went out last year. Five grand. Damn. Straight up. Five thousand dollars. That's a big number. You know, I'm sitting here thinking like buying a weed eater, buying, you know, but I mean, these are like some serious, that's chunks of that's change. That's a big chunk that of money. Most people don't have lying around. Where people that I work with and know outside of this, outside of this life here, out in the world, were telling me, well, just get a window unit. Yeah. Get a window unit. I bought a house with, uh, with, um, oh, no. what's it, with air conditioner that works in every room. Central air. I ain't trying to live like, uh, yeah. like going, that. And no, I'm not, yeah. hey, but I, let me tell y'all something. Before I, they came and fixed the air conditioner, I put a window unit in. I'm not above a window unit, but I didn't pay for a window unit. 
So at five grand, I remember I called my parents and I wasn't calling them to ask for money. I, I, call, I called my parents and asked them for advice. They money is a last okay. resort. And, okay. you know, and I'm going to tell you all again, do not be ashamed if you can to ask your parents for help. I feel like that is something that's so negatively looked on by our society. Like, you or somebody, oh, everything you have, your parents gave you. In the right context, too, because also, you know, we've been, we're not sitting here a year ago playing, we weren't sitting in mom and dad's basement playing video games. You know, we've been on this grind for years now trying to make ourselves independent, successful, you know, and and maintain our sanity and, and be intellectual people. So it takes a lot of effort, you know, from all angles to really make it all function and work. But, you know, the advice that you're giving right now, man, is some solid stuff, you know, and as as a guy who's about to round 30 and come around the corner and who's going to be looking at, you know, marriage and getting a house and kids and, you know, just all those big things that come with the American dream. Um, I mean, it takes real, real deal knowledge and application to make that stuff work. So, you know, I feel like this is good, man. I feel like we're really hitting on some stuff that might actually benefit some people. Um, we might be boring as fuck. I mean, you know, we're just trying to... Uh, to get some stuff out there that we feel like we know a little bit about. and um, Yeah, because I'll tell you right now, I'm going to have people that leave comments on this thing saying, like, uh, you were wrong about this. And you know what? Maybe I am. I mean, well, I'll say on the next show, you know what? And here's a little... you you got people writing the Wall Street Journal that on the next... You know, when, you, re when you read the beginning the, of any yeah. magazine, it says, on oh, corrections are here. Mm -hmm. They were pointed out by so-and-so. So you yeah. know what I mean? But, but uh, you know, back to... So I called my parents. You know, the air conditioner's not working. You know, my dad said, well, you can pay the $5,000 or you won't have air conditioner. Yeah. That's your choices. Welcome to life. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and you know what? We took out of our savings money that we had saved. See, that's the thing, too. What are you doing with your money? Yeah. It's not about what you make. It's about what you save. My grandma used to tell me that. Take care of your pennies. And your dollars will take care of themselves. Mm, that's good. You put that money away. Yeah, the you little put that things. money away. You got the little things in check. The big so we things had like eight thousand dollars in a savings account, man. Straight up, I'm just shooting real numbers. And like I said, this is all relative because some people say some people are going to say this. You had eight thousand dollars, and then some people are going to say eight thousand dollars. <laughs> you know, but here's to me. Hey, let me tell you right. something. That was at the time the most money I've ever had in a savings account. Now I've got three thousand because I bought a goddamn air conditioner. Yeah, so let's well, go. you know, you know what I mean. Like, but guess what? You're comfy right now, ain't yeah, you? Yeah, it's you know? nice. Yeah, and uh, and 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 money. I'll get the money back. I'll get the money back. One thing I've been told by older cats is you're gonna make money, you're gonna lose money. You're gonna there's gonna be times in your life where you thought you were a king, and times in your life where you thought you were a servant. Yeah, yeah. You know, and and uh, tell you something. I feel a lot more like a king in an air conditioner than I do uh, <laughs> yeah. sweating my balls off with eight thousand dollars in my pocket. Yeah, you know what no, I mean. I hear what you're saying, man, and, and that's and that's the big difference. Is like it really just changes your whole aspect from rent or own. It's a completely different lifestyle because when you rent, what do you say? Hey, Tim, it's uh, not really my problem. It's not working. I yeah. need you to come fix it. Well, he it's might come really. fix it in two weeks. If he gets, yeah, exactly. You know, and when you're owning stuff, you've got the you've got the timetable in your hands. You can take control, and you know, so that's something. To take well, you take ownership too, and with that, we're going to take a little vape break. We'll be right back. Yeah. Oh. So let me ask you a few questions, man. So what? What? Sure. Um. You know, and, and I mean, it's probably obvious, but we're going to dumb it down a little bit. You know, what makes you? want to potentially buy a property and buy a house like where are you at right now with that in your life like because i'm someone who already owns it and now honestly man when i come home like i might walk in the door and think sometimes like i love this, this is house awesome. but i don't think about it all the time right it's yeah. just where i live right. you know what i mean i'm yeah. just paying my rent sure really yeah no, what I, do you think what really is pushing you to that next step of like should i buy because and i'll tell you this too buying a home is not for everyone mm -hmm. buying a home is not for everyone some people like tiny houses some people like trailers some people don't some people don't mm -hmm. care man yeah but what makes you want to maybe take that step into that into that? You know, you know for me, man, growing up, um, I had the I had the suburban life, you know, as a kid, man, and the white picket fence and all that. Um, I'm not saying that that's what I want to recreate for my family, but there is something I identify with as, um, like, you know, just a person who is consistent, who can maintain, and I feel like I've maintained. And going from, you know, I had roommates, and then I was on my own, and then now it's me and her. And right. then I feel like the next natural step in that progression is a house. And I feel like 
we're doing all the right things as far as, you know, I'm going to school, she's finished school, she's, you know, we both have good jobs, we're both, you know, the ball's rolling, mm -hmm. but as we, as I'm getting older and as I'm starting to, you know, think more on, you know, money, savings, you know, these types of things, uh, it gets a little scary, man. Like, I'll be honest, like, it, it's scary as hell sometimes when I sit there and I punch the numbers and I'm like, wow. You know, that's what it would take for me to get out of this situation into that situation. You know, it seems almost kind of like, you know, dauntingly impossible. And so I feel like almost driven from a point of like, I'm not going to be held back by like my frustrations of not understanding. So I'm just going to like press through that uh, confusion and like with her by my side, I know that, you know, we can make it through any situation or whatever. We've had terrible landlords and all, you know, the gauntlet or whatever. So yeah, you've already been through shit. our relationship has been strained and, and, right. and through the house thing, I feel like we would actually be able to, you know, it would almost, you know, in some ways like be a metaphor, you know, like you got that spiritual house inside you, you got to have the foundation, you got to put work into it. It's like the same concept here, you know, I'm trying to physically have a house, put work into it, build it, fix it up, make it nice, and then, you know, maybe one day have that to be able to, to sell or have that as a, a investment or a piece of nest egg exactly. that you can fall back on or, hey, you know, like if I want to start my own company one day, man, like if that means I got to sell this house and move into this smaller house, so be that, you know, but then in five more years, I know that I'll be able to upgrade again. You're going to so, up. Yeah. Right. You know? And it's just like seeing kind of now the playing field of life a little more clearly as almost a 30 year old, you can kind of read through the bullshit a little bit more and you can kind of read, I guess, like situations a little more clear. And I feel like my situation right now is clear. Like if I just keep doing what I'm doing and keep, you know, pressing forward with these same, you know, principles in life that that will be the fruit that I will, I will yield. And so I just, you know, more or less want to start breaking the ice. Like, hey, I don't want to be like, okay, I'm ready to look for a house and then not know what the heck to start, right. you know. Yeah. That's not how I want to be. And, and I'm definitely like, an, uh, I like chess, y'all. So, like, I like to think a couple moves ahead. And all the better if you can be prepared for a situation yeah. that is going to be, you know, life-changing. And, yeah. and as you'll probably attest to, man, there's a lot of transition that's involved in like coming from an apartment to a house. I'm sure that was like a big, you know, big deal. There is, but I was raised, um, you know, I was raised in a home that my parents owned. They bought it um, when it was, uh, you know, it's a big old house, a big old farmhouse, and they bought it. They thought they got such a good deal. It was ridden with termite damage. And this was before they really checked for that stuff, like yeah. super. Like when we bought all this house, we went through so many inspections mm -hmm. of different kinds. Termites, poison. I, Mold, dude, tons yeah, of stuff. Of it, yeah. ton, five different inspections, mm -hmm. man. Which also, some of that's a little bureaucratic. It's peace of mind, too, though. But it's peace of mind. Right. right. And some of it you can skip. And I remember my mother-in-law was like, don't, don't skip any of it. Don't. Just get it done. Yeah. You don't got to do it again. Right. Uh, but, you know, but they fixed that house. I mean, my dad is, owns a construction company. Well, okay, and I'll let you know. I have two dads. I have my real dad. I have my stepdad. I call them both dad. So you're going to just have to figure out when I'm talking about dad. You know what I mean? So my dad... Uh, regardless, he was uh, a construction worker, owns his own construction company, like built, I mean, really built a legacy, watched my parents from the ground legacy. up. And, and I grew up in a home, and, and my parents made me mow the yard, mm -hmm. and they made me rake the yard, mm -hmm. and they made me do all these things, dishes, laundry stuff. So now when I'm, as an adult, I'm a lot more apt to be able to do those things. Like, oh, the grass is getting tall, I guess I'll okay. go mow that. You know yeah, what I do? I yeah. put on my headphones, I listen to an hour and a half podcast while I mow, I get done, I feel fulfilled. Yeah, yeah. You know, people are like, where are you going? And that's the checklist we were referring to in that first episode. You know, that's one of those things that you can say, man, I feel good about that. Yeah. Like, it's something that needed to be done. And not that, like, hey, you know, I'm going to pat myself and I need, like, all this attention for doing whatever chore. But it does feel good when you, like, when you put yourself to, you know, a little bit of hard labor, man, and, like, break a sweat. It feels good, you know, to step out of the shower and be like, you know what, I'm going to relax and know that, like, I worked my ass off today. You know, whatever it was. Well, if you were know, in the kitchen or if you were right. outside or if you, you know, whatever it was, right. man. Like, work as hard work at your home work. as you do at your job, you yeah. know. And, and when, you know, okay, so you're going to have to replace your water heater or stuff like that. I hear that a lot. And also hear you're going to have to mow your own yard if you're on your own home. Well, God forbid you had to cook your own food or live your own life. And these kids and this culture and this people today, like, hey, no. they're afraid to do anything. Hey, no. You know, it's That's like, true. well, you're going to have to mow your own yard. Oh, my God. You can't go to the bar tomorrow. They don't know how to change a damn spark plug. It's your you day know? off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you, you so. got to mow on your day off, buddy. There are no days off. There, Yeah, there you go. 
I'll sleep when I die. There you go. Now, the, like I said, I said in the last episode, the 40 or 50 year old probably looking at us thinking, y'all boys don't even know. You're you're letting life pass you by while you're working all day. But right now, I got to work all day. I just bought a house. Right. You know, when I, listen, I got a lady that lives beside me over here. No lady that lives beside me over here. The old lady over here, son in law most for her. Mm -hmm. Don't cost her a dime. She's got the really, she got to figure it out. You know, she built a family. Mm -hmm. yeah. She's got it figured out. Yeah. Lady over here, she can afford to have a guy do her yard work every three days. There's a guy over there weed eating, trimming. I mean, her yard is amazing. Now, my yard in the middle, once a month, it looks really good. <laughs> you know, then I let it slide for a little bit, and then I mow again. Well, the goal is either potentially raise a family where somebody's going to have my back when I'm old. I mean, this lady's old. She walks around yeah, with a walker. Yeah, she's yeah. old, you know. Yeah. The old lady over here, she's old. She walks around with a cane. Mm -hmm. ah. uh, either get the money or get the family. But go. make sure you got something to take yeah. care of your stuff. Because who? Okay, That's so you're paying rent. Were you going to be paying rent when you're 60? No, yeah. How? It's you better have the house paid off. Trying to move up. Yeah, you know, you and again, not for everybody, only speaking for me. I hope that only people, there are people out there that hear me and go, he's right. And I'm sure people are going to be, he's wrong. But I hope that I can touch somebody that's kind of in that same position, kind of where you're at, yeah, man, you yeah. know? And it's always meeting in the middle. You know, it's never, well, they're, you know, here and I'm here. So it's like, I got to go. It's like you find your way in with the advice that people can give you that is supposed to help guide you, you know? So I feel like there's always going to be a little bit of pushback whenever you try to push yourself forward. Right, when you try, yeah. Mm -hmm. But that's a natural thing because when you get stretched, it makes you stronger, you know? So it's it's just one of them principles, man. You know, you, you struggle, you make it through, and then you're better for it. And, and I'll tell you one last thing, you know, a little piece of advice if you're out there looking for a home or for you, is, and it goes with renting or owning. Don't go outside of your means. Yeah. This, I'll tell you right now, the house I live in, I love it. It's mine. But it's not the nicest house. This, It's actually pretty crazy. So when me and my wife first started looking at houses, there was a house three houses down was the very first house we looked at. And we walked by this house because down on the other side of the road, there's a park. So we walked down to the park. You had to cross this house to get to the park. Mm -hmm. And we walked by this house, and it was empty. There was no for sale sign or nothing. But we were both like this house. We both said, that Something. house is, looks like shit <laughs> it looks like nobody's been in there it looks like nobody cares about it I think there actually might have been a for sale sign up and we like scoffed dude I'm 100% honest with you we scoffed at this house when we first and now it's the house we live in man and dude, I did not know that yeah man and I love this house but it's not the nicest See, that, house to ever that goes to show dude that goes to show like there you came to grips you know what I mean yeah. you had you had an expectation here your reality was here, and so you met in the middle here, and yeah. it's like boom, that's where it's at. And you're happy. You don't. You're not overextending. You know, you're not stressed about the money. You're not because you knew you set your boundaries and you stayed within those boundaries. And it was like, hey, look, yeah, I know one day I want that three story mansion, but for right now, you know what, dude, a one story ranch, that's good for me. I'll take it, like, man. Yeah, I'll yeah, take yeah. a little three bedroom, one bath. Dude, it ain't the best thing ever, but it's, it works, long, man. All day long, dude. They got a nice place, y'all. Don't let them fool you. It's okay. It's all right. It's a nice place. You know, it's got some hardwood in it and stuff, and it's cool. But, I mean, you know, you just just make sure you live inside your means. You're not a playboy. More than likely, if you're watching this, you're not a playboy. We're you just, could be. We're just talking about being happy. Just being happy, you know. Just being content. And, and, and this culture teaches you that you have to have everything to be happy and all this money and all that this stuff. True. And it's not true. No. It's yeah. not true. What you need is you need some friends, you need some family, and you need a place to rest your head. That's really it, man. And a good woman or a good man or whatever you're into. You need. I feel like a good partner. In yeah, general, partner. Yeah, really is a good place to start building. That's how I was able to buy this house and have this sure. home and good I mean, family. Dude, like I said, dude, it started with roommates and many roommates, and then it went to less roommates and eventually no roommate. You know, and it's like it's a process. So everyone's process looks different and and that's okay some people's process is like dude i moved out of my mom and dad's house and i got a fifty thousand dollar a year job bam like what the hell are y'all doing like All hey right. more power to you but like hey we're trying to get on that game so you yeah, know exactly there's no uh judgment or whatever you know we're just we're just sharing with you guys and trying to grow so I feel like that was a pretty good... Uh, yeah, I feel like that really touched base. I, I, I'll tell you this. If you have any questions, like, you know, this is going to be on uh, YouTube. This might be where you're watching it now. It might be on... Um, we, we have a Podbean. Yeah. That's P-O-D-B-E-A-N. That's like .com. That's where a lot of people start their podcasts and stuff. Makes it easy to put onto iTunes. So We're going to be able to hashtag 30-something. Yeah, you're going to be able to find this either on um, YouTube. You might be watching it now. Podbean, you might be listening. Or uh, iTunes, hopefully, you're going to be listening. And uh, I want you to leave a comment or shoot us some shoot us some, some know, feedback. Info yeah, and let yeah. us know what you think. Uh, I'll let you know that within the next like few episodes, I'd say by the... 
by this is episode two by the fifth episode we're gonna have a twitter account up we're gonna have a few things going on even gonna try to jump on instagram you know i mean we'll just try to hit it all i mean uh, not not that like we need that all that well it gives you an outlet to speak to us i feel like more yeah. than anything yeah and then really I mean? just you know there's why not use those platforms if they're there? Right, I mean, it's exactly. a tool in the toolbox. Exactly, and so we're gonna we're gonna have some places where you can like if you what if you have questions for me about owning a home or or advice for him about owning or renting or why you are the way you are and why you do what you do. I'd love to hear why you know and uh, make sure you just keep following us guys and like I said, we'll be back. We'll be trying to do an episode a week. Yeah, we're gonna and you know we're gonna throw it up. We're gonna throw some kinks in the mix. You know maybe. We vape, you know, so we're hobbyists. We like to do different things. We might do a couple reviews or whatever, you know. But it's just going to be fluid. It's just going to feel, you know, natural. And, hey, we'll let you guys know at the beginning of an episode if it's going to be something different, out of the norm. So that way, if it's not your thing, you can jump ahead or be like, hey, buddy, you need to get in on this. He's talking about drums or whatever, you know. So we'll, we'll hit on some stuff for sure. Hey man, always a pleasure, brother. Straight up, yeah, dude, man. It's uh, been fun, man. I've enjoyed this visit a lot. It's been a good. Yeah, visit. dude, this was a lot of fun. We had a real For good sure. time. I, I hate that we're not like discussing it more, but I, I, again, I like to kind of keep some of my private life private. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. And that's yeah. another thing that we'll touch on, you know. But in this society where everything is instant and shared and liked and loved or whatever, you know, it's and like hated and dude, there needs to be that space where yeah. it's just you and it's just your friends and your family. Right. You know, it's not out there for everybody. Yeah. So we we recommend recognize that and we keep our you know our boundaries and but just make sure you love your partners love your family love your friends and i really think you'll start to find your way and enjoy this life and i really saw that this weekend hanging out with for everybody sure, you know what I mean? yeah man dude well guys this is uh 30 something i'm jt i'm blake until next time guys y'all be good take care